Very nice. Women Matters again with South Africa, California, Austria. And uh, Beatrice, are you California now? No, you're in New York now? Okay, and me, Italy. And um, yeah, also Christine, who will be coming as California too. So we are not as big as <laughs> choice anymore. Anyway. Um, we yeah, are in the end, middle of August, Fer Agosto, uh, in Italia. That's um, the main fest day. Do you say fest in it in Italian? In in English, I mean festa in Italian. No, but do festival? you say festival? It's not really festival. It's a festival is something with events. No, this is like like Christmas, a holiday oh. which is really oh. important, you know. And Ferragosto, Agosto comes from August, no? And August comes from the Emperor Augustus, when Jesus was born in this time. Oh, Hanele, you say feast, it's a feast. Okay, yeah, like festa, like fest. And today we figured out that Ferragosto, I thought it has to do with ferrum, with, you know, uh, iron, but no, it comes from the fact that in those times, People didn't have holidays. Uh, and so Augustus, he decided to give a day of holiday to the workers. And the holiday in Italian is Feria. So that was Feria Agosto. So it became Ferragosto. So it's sometimes it's really nice to know where the words come from. So that would already be my check in. I give over to Vienna. Well, in August, it's usually hot in Vienna, so uh, yeah, um, we went swimming today and I haven't used uh, my fins for a long time, so I feel my whole body is just tired mm -hmm. and I decided we'll do it every week now because we just sort of, yeah, sort of, I don't know, sometimes a, a new habit starts to creep up on you and when you don't watch it it really gets you and i usually just sit and read and sit and read and that's not too good for my muscles anyway there is nothing much new in vienna uh, so i give a pass on to beatrice because she seems to change the continent <laughs> but, okay hello um Sorry, I'm a zombie. I'm calling from New York, but I got here at 7 a.m. I took the red eye airplane from San Diego and I left it almost 11 p.m. from San Diego and got here at seven in the morning and then um, had to take the train into the city. And I had a little breakfast and took a shower and then I fell sound asleep. <laughs> I, I set an alarm to be here, but it, the alarm just just went off. So I'm a, <laughs> still still asleep, even though it's noon here. Um, let's see. Uh, last month I was in California. Um, last week I was up in the mountains um, in a beautiful cabin um, that reminds me very much of Austria, and it was very beautiful. Um, and this past weekend, we um, had some birthday celebrations for various family members and a lot of fun. And now I'm in New York and I'm going to be here for about a month for a couple of performances and projects that I'm doing um, over the course of the next couple of weeks. So we'll see how things turn out. I don't have my apartment right now, so I have to. I'm um, staying with other people, but it's nice. It's it's, it's going to be a different experience of being in New York. Not not stressed out. Not with six jobs. Not having to pay bills. But visiting, doing projects. Um, but it's weird. I think something about the red eye too. When I was walking on the street to to get here, I felt like I never left. <laughs> So that was strange. It's very surreal. I feel like the last month and a half didn't actually happen. And I've actually been here the whole time. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll see how it goes, how I adjust. 
um, I will pass to California of my blood, <laughs> my mother. Um, <clears throat> well, I feel like a zombie too, but I don't have as much of an excuse. Um, <laughs> but I saw, yeah, I saw Beatrice at 10 o'clock last night. Um, we were actually at a birthday party at her, um, her, what do you want to call him? Her suitor, her primary suitor, her first choice of suitors, uh, his family house. Um, he has a wonderful, wonderful family. We were talking about how um, it's so nice. It's totally functional, it seemed to be no problems. I'm sure there's some problems under the surface, but everyone seems happy and cheerful and helpful and, and uncomplicated. And it's um, just a delight. I feel like some kind of strange, um, like I've come out of one of those film noir sort of you know thriller mysteries by comparison to this family that's so settled and happy um i have to unfortunately leave shortly so i'm looking forward to at least hearing all your check-ins um i have an appointment with my doctor it could only she could only it's a telephone appointment she could only talk to me at 9 30 today and for the and then she's going on vacation for a couple of like three weeks so um, so I kind of don't want to do it, but it's too late to cancel. So, so I just want to, um, I'm just going to slip away at nine 30. Um, so I just want to let you know that, oh, well, nine 30, my time. So I will pass immediately on. No, yeah. Tell us something about your concerts. Oh, um, hmm. my concert. Oh, is that the last time I saw you? No, you I, saw I thought, us in the German group, but not in the English group. So. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I had two. Well, I've had three concerts in the last uh, month, which is unusual for me. Um, it just turned out that way. So one concert, Beatrice will tell you about because um, she was in it too, and um, and then I did, I played the yeah I played two daytime concerts yeah which is why I couldn't come to this group. That's right. Um, very, very hard to play at that hour of the morning, um, both on Baroque violin of Bach, the Bach complete sonatas and partitas for solo violin. Um, and it was actually very nice. I, I was not looking forward to it, um, but the people were very fascinated by the, I told the history and showed the instrument and, you know, it's more like, like a lecture concert, but I did play all six pieces, which was um, very, very strenuous, um, but a, a very appreciative group of people so I was glad and now I'm getting ready for my huge Stravinsky concert in September um, which is going to take every every molecule in my brain and body <laughs> to pull off it's very challenging um, oh and I'm going to New York on Saturday so um, so next time I see you I may be also in New York um, but that's it that's just a trip back and forth so um, yeah, so I will pass on to Christine, um, our other California, whom I haven't seen for ages. So great to see you again, Christine. Thanks, it's good to be back. Um, yeah, well, I will, as you're mentioning concerts, I, uh, I take piano. And so this new teacher that I've had for about a year and a half was said, there's gonna be a recital which is like the worst thing you wanna hear, right? We're doing a recital. Oh my God, I'm too old for this, <laughs> please. So for his sake though, I mean, I kind of felt sorry for the teacher. You know, you wanna uh, honor his help and his assistance. I wanted to honor it anyway. So I agreed to do the uh, recital. I didn't wanna invite my family at all. I was just gonna show up and then I ended up inviting my family. And, and so they all came. But right before the, the recital, um, I asked him, so how many of your adult students are gonna be there? And he said, well, I didn't wanna tell you this, but you're the only adult. <laughs> the rest are all children. So that really pleased me. And I'm thinking to myself, how stupid am I that I couldn't get out of this, right? <laughs> how come I couldn't just say, I don't wanna do it? So that was my dilemma, but I, I went and did it and it was fine. Um, I, uh, I played a song by Eric Clapton called Change the World, uh, which is a lovely tune. 
And then I wrote a song and I was, I, I don't even know how, how I did this because I'm not a songwriter. But um, I, again, I guess it's testament to my piano teacher. Um, it's called Ukrainian Spring. And it's really kind of an ode to the war in Ukraine. And I took some of the national anthem, uh, Ukrainian national anthem, and I inserted it into my song. So there's a portion of it like that. And uh, I had a, a portion which sounds like um, marching, a marching beat uh, that kind of represented war. So all in all, the recital went well. My family said I did fine. Of course, you know, after they was like, well, how'd you do, you know? And I'm like, I can't even remember it. I have no memory whatsoever of playing <laughs> while I was sitting up there. So uh, I must have had some dissociative experience, but I did play the piano, so that's good. Hopefully that is the last major recital in my life. I don't, I don't need that stress. Um, and on other news, uh, our youngest daughter moved back in our house. She was gone for 16 months, living on her own, doing a good job of that, but she decided it's too expensive, which it is uh, expensive to live on her own. She tried to work something out with roommates and it, it just didn't, they couldn't find a place basically. The, the rents are so tight and so expensive. So she decided that her other alternative was to move back with mom and dad. And I can't say I'm pleased about it. In fact, I'm not pleased about it. Um, it's lovely. She usually comes up every Sunday, so I'm used to seeing her. But, you know, it's going to be an adjustment. Tom and I have been empty nesters and uh, like it that way. So it's going to be an adjustment to have her back in the house. Um, so she uh, said she was doing this so she could save money for graduate school. But so now I'm thinking in my head, oh, my gosh. At, you know, we're talking about multiple years here. She isn't even going to grad school yet. So we're talking about <laughs> a lot of years uh, while she may be here. So that's that news. Um, and then the other daughter, the older daughter, um, Adrienne, moved uh, back to Carlsbad with her boyfriend. They're living close by. See her a little bit more. But, you know, we're all busy, so don't see her a whole lot more than uh, than I did before. Um, um, but both of them are, are closer to home, so that's, that's how nice. How old is your younger daughter? Younger daughter's 24. Older daughter is 30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'll no, pass. I'm not going to continue this questioning, but I have lots of... <laughs> um, yeah, because uh, also my grandchildren enjoy being in close contact. So. Let's talk about this. As last time we talked about family, yeah. that Taking is the perfect of continuation. Our family but first, let's like continue yeah. the tech. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's basically it. Those are the main things going on uh, for me. I had last when we met like, two weeks ago. I had a, I was going to the doctor. I had a basal cell lesion removed from my back two weeks ago. And today I go back to get the stitches out. So I'll be doing that after our uh, meeting this morning. So I'm, I'm glad to be doing that because it's starting to itch and bother me. So it'll be nice to have the stitches out. So Monia, do you want to check in next? Uh, I checked in already. Hanili so, is. Uh, I guess Hanili has really checked That's in. That's right, sorry, yes. <laughs> I'm Anneli, I'm here in Johannesburg at the moment. And um, yeah, I also had an interesting month or so. Monia was speaking about swimming. We started swimming. And in the winter, it's perhaps not a good idea because we go and swim at a local pool, um, which is Olympic size pool indoors. But then you have to go outside to get to the change rooms. Now, in the winter, it was not very wise to start that, but really loved the swimming. And then I got a very interesting tinnitus in my ear. So it, I didn't feel very well at all. And then I came to stay with my daughters, talking about going, I was coming to stay with her, not she with me. And it was really been lovely to be with her in this way because we haven't done this for more than a decade, a long, a long, long time that we've been together like this for a while. Um, so it was really lovely to do things with her and to also be with her. And she's very nurturing and loving and caring and the likes, which I most probably did need also at the time because 
I was doing so much. I was so in doing mode that I didn't really take care of myself that much. So I was literally stopped in my tracks. And there are, there's so much happened then since that's just beautiful. But what I would love to share is also with you musical uh, musician ladies here is that I saw a most beautiful biography, a musical biography of Jonathan Larson um, from New York, um, a theater composer who really changed Broadway. And I was so taken by it because it's when you have a vision that you want to really bring something beautiful to the world, we sometimes get impatient. And with Jonathan, it took him eight years to, for, to be accepted for what he was bringing to Broadway at the time. And it was just an incredible old story. And unfortunately, he was not alive to really see his last show. He passed before it, was, it came on live in Broadway. But it was just so incredibly inspirational not to ever give up, for somebody to continue for eight years with something, not seeing any results yet not being accepted and then to be um, accepted in the way he changed all scene in theater at the time in the 1990s was just incredible to, to watch. And the actors that they chose for the roles were just incredible as well, because they are incredibly lookalikes to the, to the human. And um, yeah, it was just very touching. And for me, it was just at the right time to never ever give up when we have big visions for the world and it does take time for those visions to come into fruition. And we must just continue because we can easily, I was frustrated to be honest with you. A month ago, I really wanted to give up and say, this is it. I can't do this anymore by myself and in the way it's happening. And then to experience this was just incredible. So, and it, because it was a musical as well, it, you know, it just touched you on different levels because it's so auditory. Um, and the singing was just most beautiful too in it as well. And just to be there present to such a journey, um, that was just incredible. I'm complete. Yeah, thank you. So I seem to be the only one who has no daughters uh, and Beatrice is a daughter. Um, so I'm wondering about this generational thing, uh, living with daughters, living with parents, do we want to talk about that? Because last time we talked about family. What is family? And we said that family can also be not the blood family, but also a chosen family. But what it is, what is it when your blood family, for one reason or other, is still or comes still together, or so naturally they would be in different in different places? I thought that what would be a nice topic. I was wondering because. I don't know, somehow there was an echo of when you talked about the people who moved in with you with all these uh, children and you felt being taken advantage of. So I wonder whether this basic feeling of, uh, yeah, it's a rational thought to have my daughter move in again. But on the other hand, uh, this is difficult, I guess. It's, it's not that easy to, and, and Christine, you are, you are schooled in psychology. So how do you deal with it? Do you do shadow work or what do you do? Yeah, let me first uh, respond because you talked about me. I do think, uh, despite we talked that family can also be different and everything, but I do think that the the bondage or, and also the obligation between your real family is different than when there are people who just come around and you feel a little bit of connection and, and so on. So when it's your real, yeah, I imagine when it's my, my blood family, people with whom I have lived a long time in my childhood and so on, if they are really in need, I think I would be different, you know? I don't know. I'm asking you because uh, you are in this situation. How do you feel that? Do, and I mean, definitely, Christine, you said it is against what you at the moment would like to have. So what does it, what does convince you or what does bring you to the decision to, 
to accept what your daughter needs to stay in your house. So questions like that are coming into my mind. And feel free to answer to, to Monia first. Monia, repeat your question. Um, do you feel being taken advantage of? Or is it a rational uh, thought just to have a, a clean, a cleaner bill or to make it easier for your daughter or, uh, well, I have never, I never had my grandchildren live with us, but they are just a block away. So sometimes they take advantage of that too, but I, I gladly give them what they need. On the other hand, well, if the situation is different and you have them living close by, uh, that would infringe on some things, in yeah. my opinion. Let me see, Victoria has to go. Just two words before you uh, run away. Can you say something to that? You are quite often together with Beatrice, so. But you cannot say everything because she's listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, likewise, I, if I watch the recording, then she, she has to be careful what she says after I leave. Um, <laughs> but I would love to continue this next time because I think it's a very rich topic. It's um, anyway. Um, well, I yeah, I, one of the reasons I'd love to continue it next time is is that I spent a number of years living with my mother after my dad died and that's a huge topic um uh but in terms of beatrice we but i'll just say one little thing before i go which is that um we were we were just talking yesterday actually about how um because i noticed when i went over to beatrice's boyfriend's house uh, his family house um not his house it's his parents too um how beatrice was just jumped in. She was, you know, washing dishes and cooking and setting the table and just rushing around and being of service to everybody. And she was, you know, totally delighted and delightful. And um, which is all real. She wasn't putting on an act. But um, but when she's home uh, here, she is like the Queen of Sheba, and we are serving her and bowing and scraping. And um, and she, you know, complained that we had the wrong roast of coffee. So we had to get the right roast. And then she came home and stayed again when she knew we had had the correct coffee. <laughs> She's getting mad. I'm saying this with I'm saying this with tongue in cheek. You're too you have too much jet lag. You're not your sense of humor is gone. I'm I'm saying it with a twinkle, sweetheart. I miss you. And I'm gonna see you soon. And then we can both be served in restaurants and you're <laughs> leaving just before I have a chance to rebuttal. <laughs> you can, okay, you can do your rebuttal now what, as soon as I'm gone. Um, no, it's actually, it's no, it's a huge topic because because I think I think what part of what I miss when she isn't here is I miss being a mother. I miss being able to nurture and care for, you know, so, and even it's interesting, last night, one of my dreams was, again, when she was a baby and I was looking after her. So a lot of my dreams are about her. She's always a little child and I'm, I'm caring for her. Um, I mean, of course, there's that could be a whole psychological discourse right there. Um, um, <laughs> that's another topic. She's writing things in the chat. I've got to go, but um, I hope we can continue next time. It's a great topic um, in general, I think, and lots of love and great to see you again, Hanali. It's been a long time and Christine, Sometime we should meet in the flesh now that- I was um, thinking that too, yeah, yeah, so yeah. We'll be in touch. All right, love to everybody. And I'm really sorry to go. I couldn't avoid it. And see you um, next time. So- uh, What does that mean, how that we continue it? But now I would like, I would love to hear Christine. And of course, <laughs> I'm also very interested in what Beatrice, why she moved to New York from Oregon and other, so it's 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 let her have a little time to digest what her mother said <laughs> um well Monia I don't I don't know how I'm dealing with this because it actually kind of happened rather suddenly our daughter mentioned not that long ago a few weeks ago that for grad school she wanted to save some money and was it okay if she moved back but 
she didn't specify anything. So I kind of assumed when she started grad school, she might be moving home, which would be maybe a year from now. So next thing you know, she's like, oh, you know, August. <laughs> and then she even moved it up because uh, her uh, apartment is inundated with ants and she couldn't control the ants and they were getting into everything. So she just decided to, to leave early. So it, it's been a little bit of a whiplash to have her back so quickly. But I think I have to work primarily on boundaries because you know that mom side of me does want to check in, make sure everything's okay. And, you know, do you need anything at the store? And I think I need to kind of not do that. She's been living on her own. I think I just want to establish with her. Um, you take, you do you, <laughs> you take care of you. Um, and I'll take care of me and dad. And some of that will overlap for sure. But I think for myself, I need to just make sure that she's not in my head a lot that I'm not thinking a lot about her and her well-being. I think that's what I'm most concerned about. I don't want to fall back into that because it's a lot of energy, a lot of emotional energy to do that. Um, and I think I'm also, as we're talking, I'm realizing that a, as a daughter to my parents, um, one of the biggest regrets I have is that I moved from New Jersey to California when I was young. Uh, I came here after college and I think it broke my mom's heart. She, you know, she often asked me, why did you have to move so far away? Um, and she asked me that, you know, really for decades, I never had a very good answer, but, or one that pleased her or satisfied her in any way. So as a daughter, I kind of feel like, wow, you know, if my kids did that, I can see how hurtful uh, that could be. Um, I didn't leave because there was any rift or any problem or any conflict. I just wanted an adventure. So I was looking for adventure in my young life and California was a good option. Um, my parents, you know, again, as a parent, I can see it from the other side and, and I see it very differently now. Um, and could see how that would be painful uh, for them. So that, that's my story about being the mom and uh, being the daughter, both, yeah. So let's see what Beatrice is saying. Oh, Haneli, do you want to jump in before, give her some more time? I can I can say something if Beatrice wants to still sit sit with whatever is emerging for her. <laughs> um, yeah, this is very interesting. The relation of my daughter is more like a friend. We like soulmates, so it's it's sometimes difficult to look at it from a mother daughter perspective. Like I was the daughter of my mother, and if I think back, we've always been very close. But when I think back at some stage, I think it was around about 2015, I was doing some journeys with Barbara Marks Hubbard. And the one day we were going to visit my mom together. And on the way there, I said something very interesting to my daughter. I said to her, I don't want us to relate as mother and daughter again. I don't want you to relate to your wounded mother. I want us soul to soul to connect. And yes, I'll still be your mother. So... It was very really sweet, actually, at the time, and she saw, she understood what I was asking, but it did change our relationship on some level. And then sometimes she would say, can I now speak to my mother? And I'd say, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. So it started, and then it started taking on its own journey of really becoming like soulmates rather than mother-daughter. So even, I always personally had a very interesting view of family and family structures. And at that same day, I did something with my mother too, although I didn't say it verbally, I did it telepathically. I said the same to her. I said, I don't want to relate to you anymore as your wounded daughter. And I want to, our souls to connect. And even then, our relationship changed. Immediately, it changed. And the way we communicated changed. And all the grudges and stuff I had against her, because she was quite cruel to me when I was young, a young girl, disappeared because of the level we started to 
to connect and to communicate. And so for me, it's very interesting. My daughter also came to stay with me after varsity. She was in Cape Town and she came to Johannesburg and she and her partner lived with me for a year. And then since then, we that didn't happen. So I cannot um, refer to anything like that. I. I was the one who went to stay with them for like a month here and a month there because I was a gypsy. I was a nomad. And even now, I'm just staying with her for a month or so. But it's it's interesting because we are quite aware of each other's boundaries. And um, I love to give her space as well when I'm with her. And when she's visiting with me, she does the same. But it, I do believe that I maybe have a very interesting view on family relationships, generally speaking. So the traditional ones, it's not something that I ever subscribe to. For me, it's about connection and belonging, where I felt deep connection, resonance with other people. So the other type of family she was speaking about, Heidi. So that's for me that comes up now to share. Thank you, I'm complete. I guess it's my turn. There's been so much talk about me sitting and just. <laughs> um, that's interesting, Hanalei. I think I think it's important. I mean, also what you're saying, Christine, that if you want to have a new kind of relationship, you have to be intentional about it. You have to say, okay, I want to be relate to you in this way, or oh, okay, I have these boundaries, or okay, this is a new chapter, and. My mother and I were talking about this a little bit that it's interesting. I think I think we've had different transition periods and we've had played different roles. I mean, we were just talking the other day about um, when I was in college, I sent my mother off to New York because she wanted to live in New York for a bit. And I bought her her ticket and I helped her pack her suitcase and I drove her to the airport and I sent her away, you know, and I, and I said, I said, in that moment, I felt like I was the mother, like I sent her off on her journey. And then I picked her up from the airport when she came back, you know, and so we've had these different dynamics over the years. And I think every, every time something changes, we have to reevaluate what the relationship is. And I think when other people are become core parts of our lives I think that also changes the dynamic my mother and I by ourselves are very different than my mother and I with other people um so we're constantly navigating that but I think sometimes we revert back to old patterns or old relationships and then get frustrated by that because we know that's not where we are where we want to be but we haven't actually communicated about what what this next iteration is so but no I I was getting a little annoyed because I I you know my mother likes to exaggerate and and you know with fun and games as well but but she made it sound <laughs> quite bad for me that I don't help out and don't do anything that I only stayed with her when the coffee was good and I don't think that's a fair <laughs> assessment but um but it is true that each, you know, also each a household and each family has its own culture. This other family she was talking about, you know, everybody in the household contributes all the time. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, everything. Everybody is, you know, one person makes something, somebody else picks up the dishes. It's constantly kind of in community. And our house was never like that. My father always did all of the cooking for my mother and me and served us um and now my mother's friend alfred does the same thing um so it's i mean i i chatted her i said i said actually i think alfred is the mother in our house maybe in terms of serving and nurturing and taking care of things um so it, it but that's the cult that i mean that's the way it is at our house and 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 there's never been a conversation where they've said okay, how about you do didn't make dinner tonight? Or can you help me with this? I would, I would happily jump in, but be, I, I just, I tend to just slot myself into whatever the dynamic is that's going on, which is a thing I, I, I adjust to other people rather than bringing in my own 
way of being. And so in, in a household where everybody's doing things, I'll be one of those people. And if that's not what's going on, then I won't. I don't know if that makes any sense. I think I've said a lot. I think I'll stop. Well, I do think one of the lovely things about home, which is returning to your origin home, is that it's comfortable and you can kind of relax and kind of let yourself not have to uh, have any pretense. Uh, and, and before going to bed last night, my daughter said, well, at least I know I'm going to sleep soundly and sleep well here. You know, so that that was nice. It's, it's sweet that she knows this is a comfortable place and she's going to, you know, be free from, um, you know, anything that could be unsettling during her sleep. So I, I think it's lovely to be able to go to your mother's home and, you know, have, have a change of pace. Isn't that what it's all about? Having that change of pace, I think. Hello, hello, Christine. Hello. Nice to see you. Very we are fun. talking about mother-daughter relationships and especially when daughters come home again after several time being outside of the house and coming back to stay here, or in the case of Haneli, who went for a while to stay with her daughter. So how is that working out? You have a daughter too, haven't you? Yeah. No, a son. You have a son. So was it? Yeah. yeah. But even a son can decide when he is 30 to come back home. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like the group has a bit of this in common, huh? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, I don't either. I don't at the moment. But I'll just be here and present and let you all please continue with where you are. Okay. I don't want to interfere. Yeah, as a, as a late bloomer here. <laughs> when the time is right, you will jump in. I think yeah. Haneli and Monia, uh, you wanted to, re to to respond something? It seemed to me, I'm not sure. To what Beatrice said. Well, I'm still wondering uh, why Beatrice is going. So you like being in New York. Did I get that correct? Yeah. But it, this is, as uh, Christine mentioned, you couldn't get farther away from California than going to New York. So your mother has to follow you. Uh, and it's, she loves New York more than I do, for the yeah. record. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember that when uh, I was pregnant with my first daughter, we moved from Austria to New York. And it must have been terribly hard for my parents and my mother. And of course, they didn't really see their grandchildren grow up because uh, we stayed there for nine years. And I'm very, very glad that I always live close by and never intended to go abroad. I don't know why. And, it's actually strange because usually I thought everybody wants to have a semester at least somewhere else. No, they just studied here. And so after I appreciated having my grandchildren so close by, I understood much better how my mother, because my mother-in-law prayed every night that we would return and it took us nine years to return. So it's, uh, on the other hand, it saved us because they were very dominant. They really uh, were very dominant and we wouldn't have become what we were and being close together as a couple. Uh, yeah, it's because whenever we uh, visited them before we went to the States, uh, we sort of fell asleep on the couch because we were so exhausted and tired by just working. And as you said, you know, here you can relax and everything is fine, as you said, Christine. Uh, but it's a kind of regression, I feel, as well. So, yeah. But I was, I was wondering because 
there is somebody obviously who feel Patrice you feel rather close to in Oregon, and still you move to New York. So. No, I haven't. I haven't moved back. This is a this is a trip, and I'm actually, I'm actually kind of annoyed at the timing of it because I mm -hmm. feel like I I left New York to take a break right. and to try something different, and then my break so far mostly was traveling and being in California and doing family stuff for, with our two families, and then I got invited to do these projects here that were time that are at a certain time so that's why I'm here I'm here to do I have two performances and this week I'm participating in a week-long um theater research project with some people that I worked with on something else and it's in person and um so I'm here I'm here for pro it's kind of a work trip in some some way yeah. I mean the projects aren't really paying me very much but they paid my flight to get me here um and it's weird because I haven't I've only been gone for a month and a half which is why it feels like I never left you know I mean we'll see how I adjust in the next few days but this morning walking I, I felt like I'd never left like like the last month and a half was a dream and I'm already back <laughs> um I love New York I think I think there's still more future here for me but I, I'm not, I don't want to move back again right now. On the other hand, if, you know, in this month that I'm here, if somebody, these people I'm working with, if they offered me, you know, an amazing opportunity or amazing job, then I'll have to consider and think about what's next. But I really, I, I want to be taking my break right now. That, that was my real goal. At least, at least on this trip, it is, le it's more relaxed than, the way it was when I was here before. So maybe I'll get to experience New York in a different way, which I'm looking forward to. But um, yeah, I mean, when I went to college talking about being far away, I got, I got on the wait list for Harvard and all I had to do was write a letter of intent and they would have let me in. And I didn't write it because I didn't wanna get in because I think, I mean, part of it is I think I just didn't feel like that was the right school, but part of it is I think I didn't want to be that far away from my mother. And I went to UC Santa Barbara and then I lived there for four years after college and that's only a four hour drive. And I came down to San Diego all the time and she came up to Santa Barbara all the time. So we were always close together. New York has been a dream for a long time. So when I came here for graduate school, that was a really major thing for me. But my mother had already been traveling here off and on over the years. So anyway, we saw each other all the time because <laughs> she was here. And then I would come home for the holidays. And, and so it's never felt, even when we're far away, it's never felt like we're that far away because we talk a lot and we see each other a lot. And, and I think, you know, when the day comes that I have children, you know, she'll probably move to be closer to me. I mean, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I, I don't really wanna live in San Diego. I don't think she wants to keep living in San Diego. I think maybe we'll find a place that we both live, that we both like, um, but I suspect we'll be close to each other or, or we'll just be visiting constantly. Um, but, but my mother, I mean, it's interesting too, my mother moved to Austria you know, and her mother was in California. And I grew up in Austria. I was the grandchild far away. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I was nine, it was nine years abroad also before we came to California. We came home every Christmas. I saw my grandmother once a year for about a week or 10 days. Um, so that's an interesting parallel, but also she, my grandmother is very dominant. So I don't know. That's it's that's very interesting, Monia. Yeah, I mean, yeah, wish my mother was here. You could talk about that parallel. Well, it's parallel. It's, it's, yeah. It sounds much alike. I was just also wondering uh, how your mother will take to the family of your friend, because she seemed rather 
astonished that somebody could live like this, being that close and not, yeah. She, 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 she had a very peculiar phrase, like waking up from a horror movie or something like that. So that's amazing. <laughs> Well, that's what I was saying before about adjust adjustment period. This is an, a new chapter now, mm -hmm. and will be, and then it'll keep changing, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think we're we actually had a very difficult time for about a week at the end of July where we were fighting a lot, my mother and I. Um, and mm -hmm. now we're but we've found our equilibrium again, but what but I think it, what were you fighting about, really? It was some, I mean, we actually went to her therapy. She had a therapy appointment and I, I was brought along for it. And the therapist said that it was, it was, we were fighting for power. That we, that each of us wanted to, and, and, and that each of us had our own desires and our own needs, but somehow. Because I have been reading a lot about uh, that everything's mostly about power. And I was rather shaken, but it's, it's, it, it's, we have to face that. It's mostly about power, power about others, power of manipulation. So I have been doing some shadow work of my own for the couple, last couple of days. Uh, and it's quite, quite necessary, I guess. Yeah. I'm but, wondering if it is also the need of, of, how do you call that individuation that you have to get uh, away from the the hen let's yeah. say and become your own yeah. person you well, know? That's, that's, that's beatrice's part now she has to yeah. be not to give in yeah. yeah well i think both of us what's also interesting is my mother has been in a process of individuation just from the world, but also from, from my grandmother. When my, mm -hmm. after my grandmother died, my mother started this major journey of self-development and individuation and, and finding out who she is as a person outside of the, the thumb of my grandmother that, and, and the control of my grandmother that is still present as a voice in her head, even though my grandmother is no longer alive. And then I'm, I've had different versions of individual. I mean, this is actually interesting, Christine. I like, I could never, I, I never will move back with my mother. Um, I could never do it. I think I, I find myself regressing when I'm, when I'm at the house and, and then our dynamic gets weird and we have a really good relationship most of the time, but when we're together in that house, it gets, it's strange. And we don't really know how to interact. And I think it's, it's, that's why I, you know, I've always, when I left for college, that was it. And, and I've only ever stayed for a few weeks at a time, maybe, but even when I decided to take a break from New York, I, I said, I'm not, I'm not going to move back in at home. I'll go to Portland and I'll live with, you know, in Galen's house for a while or I'll stay with friends in LA or something. Or maybe I'll stay in California for a bit, but I, I know that I can't move back home. If I move back home, I'm not going to keep making progress. But I, I mean, not to say that your daughter is making the wrong, I just, but it's interesting to me. And I know friends who, who do this. I mean, I have a friend who's 28, who's never left. He left home for college for four years and that's it. And he's back with his parents again. And he's successfully, you know, leading his life and, it works for you know i don't know so that's that's interesting well i don't know i don't know how you just define success but he's composing and he's performing and he's doing his own thing but living in his parents house so i don't know i've talked a lot i'm gonna stop talking for a bit i think you don't really feel totally grown up until you're taking you're the one taking care of yourself though i mean it's hard to feel like a grown-up if somebody else is providing for you at, at at even a small level so but Beatrice I was also wondering you know you have a small family and it sounds like your uh your guy friend has a bigger family and maybe your mother was an only child I don't know but there's there's just a really different dynamic how larger families operate with one another um, compared to whether, you know, if it's a small nuclear family, there's just a different dynamic.
I was wondering, Christine, you got to have an impression what we are talking about, about children moving back, adult children into the families and so on. And I to the what we said just now for the individuation. And it's I actually I went from family into uh, marriage, and that is the same thing, not to get uh, adult because it took me I was about forty when I finally was alone, and had to provide and do everything myself. So this fear of being alone and having to take care for yourself, no, it might be a part of people. I mean, it's easier to go back home, but also this feeling alone and not able to, insufficient, not able to, to manage life, it could be, no? So that you find, try to find a situation where somebody else is providing, or at least caring a lot. That would be my experience. I'm wondering, Christine, do you want to contribute something to that? You are uh, silent. Oh, from this, yeah. this Christine, the one that's just read. Um, yeah. Actually, I'm just really being present and receiving with what you all have been exploring together. So I'm very content with this gratitude that I'm able to be here with the group. So I, I don't, I'm just busy receiving, so I don't have any new ideas about myself with the subject, but maybe when we're next together, I will have some. Okay. But thank you so much for asking. It's kind of you to ask. I didn't want to have you sit in the, you know, in no. the seat of the theater. <laughs> thank you. I feel like you very generously included me. And now I want also to include again, Haneli, who didn't have her fair <laughs> share yet. <laughs> I just, um, as you're all sharing, something that comes up for me is that when I has to also consider, I mean, the time when I was young, I, I went far away to study, all by myself, coming to the city, didn't know anybody, far away from everyone, because my siblings went to study in another city, and I loved it because I wanted to get away from home, and when my daughter went to study as well, she wanted to go far away to, to study, so it was wonderful for both of us at the time to have that distance. But I do also recognize that we live in another time at the moment um, where it really is financially hard for young people to start out on their own. It's not easy. We have to consider that too. That adds to the dynamics of something like this. It doesn't make it easier for us, but we have to consider that, that when I was striking out on my own after I studied, it was much easier for me to get a flat and furnish it and than it's today for young people to do that. It's a very different world. So from a financial point of view, yes, the pressure is a lot more than those days. And even when my daughter went to Boston, when she started out on her own. So I do think we have to consider that as well. That's not so black and white, you know, this whole dilemma of how do young people survive these days because of the way life turned out and become so complex for in so many different ways. Yet I do feel that that individuation is very important and that that self-reliance at that young adult age, um, that we had to go away from your family home. My son moved to New Zealand uh, 12 years ago. It's quite, it's really far, it's very expensive to travel there. It's not like I can hop onto a plane to New York tomorrow or to Europe, whereas it's double the price to go to visit them in New Zealand from where we are. So we don't see them that often. But if I think back of how our relationship, my relationship with him changed is that he became a young man, adult, quicker in my experience, uh, looking after himself, providing for his own family and not having us close at all. So not seeing us that often. So when we relate now, it's on a different level as well, because it's not like my little boy um, is a grown, young, a grown up young man uh, looking after himself and his family and providing for them. Although he has a very tight knit traditional family unit, which I don't, like I said, I have very different views on that, but I respect that. But 
on a one-to-one -one level, it's very different from, from my side at least. Obviously he still see me as his mom and I'm still his mother, but it's not that the bond changed because of the distance. And I don't see my grandkids often, which is not nice at all. But in the beginning, I didn't like to be called grandmother, not because of age or anything. It was, I wanted them to be my friends rather than that type of um, relationship of that type of hierarchy, family hierarchies, but it's just me. <laughs> so I'm just wearing that way. But yes, I do believe that we have to consider that we live in a different time these days. And I do also know my daughter had a bad breakup last year with her partner and it was beautiful to watch her strike out on her own, going into her own place and beginning her new life. It was the most beautiful thing to watch and still is which I felt was necessary as well. She could have stayed with me at the time, but it would have, wouldn't have been the answer because she had to rediscover herself after that relationship. So yes, I, relationships is fascinating things, especially in such structures. And I think for a mother, as a mother to be able to stand back also, to let the, them decide for themselves. And like in your situation, Christine, that um, the boundaries, like you said, it's the most important part, and that it can possibly work. And I do understand the empty nesting and then suddenly having somebody in your space. I personally like my own space. So I'm so used to being alone by myself for 22 years already now. So it's difficult for me as well to be in somebody else's space as well. And when I now travel to Europe, I'm going to be in other people's space. That's going to be for me an interesting thing then to be able to hold my own center while I'm with others who are in a family situation. So I think that no matter of our age, if our situation is changed like that, we all have to adapt in some way. Thank you, I'm complete. Thank you, and you raised another interesting question. How is it to be in somebody else's space? You know, the experience. <clears throat> That's, it's not easy either, you know. How do you behave, Beatrice? It's not only your mother uh, and you, but also if you would <clears throat> stay, I don't know, in when you then your boyfriend, yeah, but you are in the in the family. It's not your space, not yet at least. It will never be in the same way when you have your own family. So how are we in the other uh, people's space? And you said very nicely which I find it's really okay that you are adapting on the other family. But we have often the tendency to over adapt. So then comes uh, what Christine says, the boundaries, where are our boundaries? Although we live in somebody else's space, where can I say no? You know, that would be another <laughs> very interesting question to explore, no? We are at the more or less at the end today, so we we might postpone that for next time. But the family, it's a topic, and I mean living together, it's a topic which is very rich. Yeah, thank you, girls. Shall we do a short check out of some insights we had today? Well, I wrote down for next step uh, the power structures in a family and individuation. Mm -hmm. uh, why does someone need to be dominant would be another aspect. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of topics. Um, yeah, write down also that one too, the, how it is to be in somebody else's spaces. How do we yes, live when we don't have down. our own space? Mm -hmm. I wrote it down already as well. It's very interesting. Yeah. And particularly if there is a family structure and then you have to find your own dynamics in that. So it's, well, Patricia, I had interesting <laughs> times. I had a few. <laughs> okay, that's my checkup. Thank you all. It was a very, very interesting and a shame that Victoria had to leave, but it's probably not a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she will listen to it later, but she cannot defend, she cannot jump in. That's the only thing. Or she can write a comment or something, you know. Who, who is next? Who is going next? 
I'll go next. Um, I think the space question is interesting because it's not just how you are in someone else's space, but it's how how does that someone else create a space for other people? And and then on the flip side, I guess if you're hosting, how do you create a space? How do you create a space where people can feel relaxed or can feel like themselves or feel like they can say no or set boundaries? versus spaces that feel like they already have something going on in them and the only option is to be caught up in whatever that dynamic is. I think that's very interesting. So I'm looking forward to talking about that next time. I certainly have thoughts about it. I was last month, I was bouncing around so much. I didn't sleep in the same bed for more than two nights at a time, which was very disorienting. So, and I don't recommend it. So that that was an interesting experience too. Um, yeah, thank you. This was great. I'm, I look forward to continuing and continuing with my mother as well. And so wonderful to see you, Christine, California, Christine. Um, I had spent a really long time and Hanali too, we've missed you. So I'm glad the, the, the group is back. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will pass it along. Yeah, thank you. Um, I love also the space, the space question because I've, I'm a testament of that for the last nine years of being a nomad and being sometimes in other people's spaces. And then what I had to learn through the process to my sense of self, of my own space within that space, of not losing myself in it, and to also just do my own thing while I'm in that space still respecting the others and that's been a very lovely journey it's I've really discovered how generous humanity really is actually humans uh, from a spirit a spirit uh, generosity of spirit not so much other things but yeah so thank you for that and also Christine thank you for sharing so vulnerably your your experience of your daughter and um thank you for that I truly Feel it in my body that it really created something else for us now to continue next time and so thank you for that vulnerability of sharing that so graciously with us I really appreciate that and everybody else has shared and even Beatrice you and your mom it was like this drama going off in front of us and being present to that was sacred it's beautiful thank you for that I will um, thank you all for listening and I'll let you know in a couple of more weeks, since she just spent one night here so far, I'll, <laughs> I'll give you an update in a couple of weeks as, uh, as to how it's going. So, and I, I will think about the shadow portions, Monia, and the power portions too. Yeah, a lot to think about. I'm done. You know, I'll just jump in and say I'm intrigued with the concept of power. The way, especially the way Monia, the way you presented it, that it might be the underbelly of a lot of the issues when we struggle in relationships. So I, I, I am holding that question real close to my heart, and um, it'd be fascinating to see where we go with that. Also, we have lots. We've got a long list of possibilities together. And it's great to see you, Christine, and also to see you, Hanali. Yeah, it's been a long time. So we're back together and that feels very um, heartwarming. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. For me, it's also interesting, this part of being in somebody else's space or somebody being in your space, which I'm experiencing often. And how far can you, as a host, offer? And where do you have to say no? You know, that was my my last year's experience. So, and can you say no? And how do you say no? And things like that. So I think we have uh, really, for the next half year until Christmas, I think we could fill it with these topics. <laughs> yeah, I wish you a good evening, everybody, or good morning, good afternoon for whoever is there. You no. Know, there on the other side so <laughs> or down there you are on the same uh, uh on the same time so have a good time and i love you all really it's so nice i i'm 
excited. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.